All right, so having a convertible, one of the things you definitely need to have is a speaker. Uh, you need to have a radio, so when you're out there cruising along, you can listen to the radio. I guess any car has that. But you'll notice that there are conspicuously no holes in this door panel for a speaker. And there is no radio in the slot here. I have a plan, and uh, I'm going to go through today how we're going to execute that plan. The idea here is... Uh, to utilize Bluetooth uh, and USB charging capabilities to use the phone as our um, our media source instead of you know your classic what you might refer to as a legacy radio in the car uh, and then you have to spend money for the radio and get have an aux port with a cable sticking out or do Bluetooth support in the radio which makes the radio that much more expensive um, this is a really cost-effective um, and very simple installation that will give you all those capabilities without having to tear up the carpet and run speaker wires everywhere. Uh, just using the Bluetooth and uh, setting up a, a, a charging station where the radio used to be. And you won't have to poke holes in the fine door panels that you have. Um, and, you know, who, who really needs to have speakers blowing up from their, their kneecaps when it's much better to have the speakers coming from behind you here because uh, that's where your ears are right so what we're going to do I purchased this uh, USB um, Bluetooth speaker this is only like a $20 speaker you can spend a little bit more if you want to get a like a speaker bar from a, a boat you can get those but the whole idea is that this whole area back here behind the, the convertible is uh, it lends itself to having a a speaker right in there so we're gonna mount this speaker right here and uh, it has Bluetooth capabilities and it's charged with a with a USB uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install this USB charger right here this is a typical charger that you would normally replace your cigarette lighter with um, and it, it allows you to charge uh, USB um, and I'm going to plug this in. This takes regular DC in, 12 volts. And I'm going to plug it into the light circuit for the top here. And pretty much on an MGB, anytime you see a purple wire, it's always hot, but it's fused uh, at the fuse box. So we're going to splice in on this purple wire right here. And we're going to install this thing in the trunk right here. And then I'm going to put a, a pass-through port for a USB to go to charge that speaker and uh, that'll be the solution for today um, I think it's going to be a really uh, really seamless a lot, uh, wireless solution you want to worry about um, you know digging up the carpet or or anything like that uh, so let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna work on splicing this purple wire and uh, mounting this into the back plate one of the things that makes this uh, task really easy is these little splicers the cool thing about these is that you don't ever have to actually cut the wire that you're going to splice into or twist the wires or do anything like that. Um, the, uh, the wire that you want to splice in, I don't know if you can see those, a little, this, little, this little guillotine here grabs on. You put the wire that you want to splice in on the, on the inside right here and then you just put this like a saddle right over the top of the live wire that you want to splice in on and then you just clamp this down with a with a pair of pliers and you can see there's a there's a little cap right here it keeps any kind of anything from getting in there and uh, this little thing will go through and it will splice between those two wires when you're done you just put this little cap over the top of this to keep it from shorting out on anything and you have a splice it takes like two minutes um, you just you know cut the wire you don't even have to cut the uh, the original wire but you you cut your your destination wire to size just splice that baby in. One one movement. No wiring, tape, nothing. Just click, off you go. Alright, there you go. Got your little splice right there on the purple wire. Blue wire comes around here. A bit of wire management. Got a nice positive ground right there. And it goes into the unit. That'll give me a USB charger in the in the trunk, and I'll have a pass-through cable coming through on the speaker 
that'll uh, that'll connect to that. That will give me no visible wires in the cabin and uh, uh, increase my capabilities here in the trunk. All right, let's go ahead and install that speaker. I've decided to uh, start printing my car parts in ABS. Uh, thanks to the advice of some people who's uh, been contributing on the site and uh, additional research that I've done on uh, 3D printing and use in the automotive industry. Um, and here you can see I'm printing out a, a custom bracket for, um, for those speakers that I'm about to install or that, the, the one bar speaker in the back there. Um, it did require, ABS requires no drafts and it has a, a temperature control that you need to do so I I made this neat little uh, uh, enclosure out of plexiglass. Just one bend right here in the plexiglass. And uh, so that's doing the number. So as soon as this, it takes a little while for this thing to print out, but as soon as we get this done, we'll cut away and uh, show the installation on that speaker. All right, so through some uh, creative wrangling and measurements, uh, Took a measurement from the bottom of the speaker to this rivet hole and transposed that rivet hole on the inside of the trunk and calculated that this charging port is three quarters of an inch off center um, and three eighths of an inch up from the bottom and took those measurements and transcribed them and drilled a pilot hole. This pilot hole is big enough for this piece of copper wire and so now I'm just going to Put this copper wire kind of on the little point where the port is and just push it back in and see if it all matches up. Let's see if we can do that in real time. Here. Okay. I think that'll work just fine. Ta da! So. The uh, objective here is to put that hole exactly where that charging cable is going to be so there won't be any cable dangling and it'll all be in the trunk. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, assume that that's correct and uh, we're going to move forward with uh, making a, the right size hole for that. Alright, so there's our hole. Uh, if all of our calculations work out right, we'll be able to put this, uh, this cable here through that hole. Um, and it'll fit straight up and there will be no cabling whatsoever in the uh, in the driver's compartment. Now you see that black stuff around there? That looks like a grommet. What it is, is actually some of this stuff. This is uh, an undercoating that you put underneath your car. Now, you know, obviously when you drill holes, you're going to have a lot of exposed metal and I don't want to you know, invite rust. To take out this uh, back panel here, so um, we put some. I was thinking some paint, and then I was thinking maybe I'll take a piece of hose. But then you know, overall the the hole would need to be bigger to accommodate uh, any kind of grommet that you would put in there. So I got the idea that I'd use a little bit of this undercoating, um, paint it on with a paintbrush, and uh, you know, spray a little into a little container, and then paint it on with a brush. And what happens with this stuff is it bubbles up and makes like a foamy uh, barrier. That barrier there, well, that, that will become a grommet and that'll protect any kind of movement back and forth and it'll also protect it for some rust. So in order to drill that hole, I just want to cover real quick um, the size of the thickness on this, this connector right here that's going to be sticking through pretty wide and if I were to drill a single hole it would be a massive drill hole um, in order to get that to fit. Let I me mean, see how wide that is. Um, in order for that to, to be something that could pass through easily. But the problem is, is that it's, it's, it's only that thick but it's not that wide. So I don't want to, didn't want to have a big old hole in the back of the trunk. So what I did was I opted for um, drilling two holes side by side. Now the method for that is you got to kind of do it in pieces. So uh, I started with a smaller hole and find out where the centers are and I, I did a pilot hole. Um, started first with a smaller drill hole and then went to a, uh, a, a next size up um, and this gets them to where they're almost touching and then I used the final size uh, drill uh, to accommodate the thickness. That way we would be able to support the width 
and without having a big old hole. And that gave us kind of an, an elongated hole. You can see in the end there. Uh, and I think that that little rubber grommet thing that we made is going to work out really well. All right, so let's wait for that to dry and then we'll continue the wiring. Quick little trick uh, during cleanup here. I thought I'd share with everyone. <laughs> so this is a permanent magnet. You see it sticks to the metal. If you put uh, a shop towel around a permanent magnet, when you go to clean up your metal filings, it'll all stick to the magnet within the shop towel. Whoops, coming out. And all you have to do is throw out the shop towel. Whoops, you put the magnet inside your shop towel and just kind of wipe it along. And the magnet will pick up all the metal shavings. See that? And all you have to do at that point is throw away the shop towel. You don't have to worry about all the metal shavings that you missed. Quick little trick. Alright, so here you can see the, the wire coming through. This is the, uh, the connector that will connect to that. Um, I have the battery shutoff switch here. And when I switch that on, you'll see it is in fact charging. And uh, I went ahead and put uh, some con some um, double-sided tape on here because the amount that I'm 3D printing is still printing those things. Those things take forever to print. Um, and so I'll uh, let me pull this double-sided tape off and then I'll, I'll put it into place just as a mock-up. Okay, there we go. I've got some double-sided tape in there. Again, this is just for the mock-up. This, uh, you see the little connector goes right in the hole right there. That way this whole thing can mount flush. Let's see if I can get the tape to engage. <laughs> well, sort of. <laughs> it's, uh, on something that's floppy but uh, you get the idea that's where it will look once we get it going all right so it's kind of invisible you really can't even see it uh, but there's a speaker it's uh, installed currently only with uh, contact tape or uh, double-sided tape still printing the 3d printed mounts those will be done soon and then we'll have it installed uh, a bit more permanently uh, but here's a good example of what we were trying to accomplish um, again no radio no wires, no wires running through, no holes in the door. All you have is Bluetooth to your phone. And you have some noise coming out of the back. It's right at your ear, so you can hear it nicely. Here's all the wires that we got back here. And you can see the connector comes all the way through the wall and the wire comes into the charger and you know even if you uninstall that that speaker has a, a, a battery but you can see when it when you plug it in that it comes on the blue light comes on There you go, there's a wireless Bluetooth speaker installed in a 1977 MGB. Check back next week, we're still working on making this a perfect ride.